I ran across this problem in the Cisco curriculum dealing with RIP version 1 auto summarization and classful boundaries and essentially what you have here is between these two routers at 192.168.1 network slash 24 between these two routers a 192.168.2 network slash 24 and then you have non-classful networks down here 10.10.3 slash 24 10.10.2 slash 24 and 10.10.3 slash 24 and 10.10.1 slash 24 and then you have non-classful networks down here 10.10.3 24 and 10 10 2 24 and 10 10 24 now, the reason these bottom networks are classless is that if a um, network starts with a number 10, it's usually a class A network and therefore would have a slash 8 subnet mask by default. So typically this would be 10.0.0.0 network slash 8. So we have three classless networks here. We've got two classful networks up here and we're running RIP version 1. So then the, quest the question goes, what will these routers know in their routing tables? And I'll give you a second to think about that. And it was a question that had me stumped. And, but I really learned a lot from the scenario. And that's why I built it into a packet tracer to talk about it. In other words, I know that this router has a connected network 192.168.1. So in its routing table, it should have the 192.168.1 network. And I know that it also has the 10.10.3 slash 24 in its routing table as a connected route. And it's going to know that it's slash 24, right? Um, it's going to know that it's slash 24 classless because it's a connected route. So I know this router has two connected routes. Now, what else will be in its routing table, right? Well, it can learn from RIP version 1 about the 2 network over here, the 192.168.2 network. So it should have that in its routing table. But then the question becomes, will it, what will it learn from these routers, R3 here and R4, right? Will it learn about the 10.10.2 network? That's not classful. Will it learn about the 10.10.1 network slash 24? That's not classful. Now normally, the way I talk about RIP is that RIP is unable to route classless routing um, or classless networks, right? Because it's not a classless routing protocol. It doesn't send subnet mask information in its, um, in its routing table. So I assumed that R3 would tell R0 here about a 10 network slash 8 and that R0 would have bad information. Um, that it would not be able to make sense of. And, um, and I was wrong. So, um, and the reason that I was wrong is has to do with the idea of classful boundaries and the fact that RIP version 1 auto-summarizes, but it auto-summarizes between different networks. In other words, um, if you see here, this router has a 10.10.3 network, and then over here it has a 192.168.1 network. So this router, router 0, will tell router 1 about a 10.0.0 slash 8 network. It will summarize this network into a classful network when it advertises it to R1. But will that happen over here? And it's very interesting. If you open up this router and you look at its routing table, you'll see that it actually did learn from RIP about the one network, right, slash 24, the 10.10.1 network. It also learned about the 10.10.2 network, slash 24. How did it learn about these non-classful networks from RIP, which is not a classless, it's not a classless routing protocol? How did that happen? Well, the reason is this is not a classful boundary here. In other words, this router, router 0, already has a 10.10.3 network slash 24. And when it receives the information from R3, it is able to basically figure out that the information coming to it is 10.10.2 um, and that to also apply a slash 24 to that route automatically. And the other thing that we can do is we can go into simulation mode here and we can see it happening. So we go into simulation mode and we edit filters 
and we make sure rip is the only thing check marked. You can show all here or none and then check mark rip, right? And then what you can do is you can press auto capture, right? And we can see it happening. So there we go, there's a packet being sent from R4 to R3. And then now it's going to get sent again. And then let's double click on this packet to take a look at it. So we open up this packet, take a peek at it, and we'll look at the inbound PDU details. And you can see here Ethernet 2, this is a frame, this is a packet, IP, there's UDP, right? Notice the port is 520 UDP, that's RIP's port. And then you go down here to the RIP packet, and you can see here that um, it's got the 10.10.1 network in there. No subnet mask. Notice there's no subnet mask, but it did send it the full network, 10.10.1. And then over here you can see 10.10.2, right? That full network. And so R0 is able to see that it's a 10.10.1 and a 10.10.2. And since it already has a slash 24 on its 10 network, it's able to put it into its routing table correctly as three classless slash 24 subnets, right? That's amazing. But if we look at R1 here, R1 does not have such nice information because R0 auto summarizes because it changes from the 10 network to the 192.168.1 network, whereas here it's 10 network and a 10 network, both slash 24. Here you've got a 10 network and a 192.168 network. If we look at R1's routing table, it has um, information that is different. It sees only one RIP route to one 10 network slash 8. And not only that, it thinks that it has two routes to it, both metric of one hop away and one hop away. And so it's load balancing on two routes. So it's actually sending one packet this way and then one packet this way trying to get to a 10 network when in fact it's a 10.10.3, a 10.10.2, and a 10.10.1. And since this is in a big loop, all the packets will arrive at their destination, but it's not really good, um, it's not really correct routes, right? It doesn't see the individual networks, right? Also, I can test to see if my theory is correct about how the classful boundary situation and RIP sending that information across. And I can do it by running a test. So on the test, what I'll do is I'll take this router. And very quickly, I'll go to RIP and I'll remove the 10 network. And I'll add an 11 network. Okay. And I removed the 10 network, letting me do it. Okay, remove and add. Okay, so now there's a RIPS routing for an 11 network here. And what I'm going to do is I'll switch this out and I'll change it to an 11 network here. Right? And so what I'm going to do is I will change the interface really quickly to 11.0.0.1 correct subnet mask of slash 8 or classful subnet mask rather slash 8 okay and I'll do the same thing on the interface over here 10.3 that's what it was and I'll change it to 11.0.0.2 and I'll make a classful subnet mask right turn it off and on okay and I will go to rip I will move the 10 network here or no since this router has a 10 network over here and a 10 network oh, and it used to have a 10 network over here all I have to do is add the 11 network so add the 11 right because that's all rips gonna see anyway is 11 all right and so now, 
we've changed this to the 11 network slash 8. Now we've got, we no longer have, we have now a, a classful boundary here. We switch from a 10 network to an 11 network on R3. Instead of before, it was 10 network and a 10 network, both slash 24. Now on this side, it's a 10 network slash 24. And on this side, it's an 11 network slash 8. So 11 network, 10.10.2 network over here, right? So now this router should auto summarize and send R0 instead of a 10.10.2 network slash 24, R0 should learn about a 10.0.0 slash 8 network. Summarized because now it's no longer, it's now a, a boundary router, right? The boundary between the 10 and the 11. And so if we look in here and do a control C and do a show IP route, you'll see that yes, it has, it has two connected networks and it learned from RIP about the 192.168.2 network, but look at the 10. It no longer knows about the 10.10.2 and it no longer knows about the 10.10.1. And so by changing it and turning it into a boundary router, the boundary between two different network ranges, um, auto summarization is, no, is now in effect. Auto summarization is now in effect because it's a boundary router. And so R0 receives the information that way.